He's not awesome just today. He's awesome tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. Woo, and every praise. I don't know about you, but I know my God is awesome in my life. I wouldn't be here today, but nevertheless I am, because my God look beyond me. My God, look beyond what I had. My God, look beyond who I came from. My God, look beyond my faults and saw my need. That's why I know, that's why I know he's good. Not sometimes, but all the time. And all the time, my God is a good God. Somebody ought to praise him like they had never praised him before. I know your hands get heavy. I know your eyes want to close. But at some point in time, some ought to hit your hand like electricity. And they go up in the air and praise God like you never praised him before. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Man didn't make it. Man may wish he could have, but man didn't. So God made it, and he gave it to us so that we can rejoice. And again, I say rejoice and be glad in it. So let us stand. This is the day. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. That the Lord has made, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has truly made. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior, our Maker, Creator, Equalizer, Energetic. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us today. Thank you for tomorrow, even if we don't see tomorrow, but we want to give you praise wherever we are right now. Now, Heavenly Father, praises. We know send down blessings when we are praising you. Now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, dear Lord God, my creator. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Give God another strong amen. 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 Again, we come to you 
with our series of messages on when I am accused, what should I do? And truly, we need to really understand so many things we already think we understand about accusation. Amen? Amen. So looking at Acts, the uh, 22nd chapter, I want to look at today, read from today, verse 30. Before Paul, before the council, Acts 20. Two and 30. On the morrow, which is on tomorrow, because he would have known the certainty whereof he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all their counsel to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. You may be seated. While you're sitting, repeat these words. When I am accused, what should I do? One more time. When I am accused, what should I do? Now stamp it. When I am accused, what should I do? Thank you, thank you. We need to really get a little deeper on what we should do in every circumstance. But I have to say, especially in some circumstances, because in some we need to really speak up for ourselves. And some, we really need to be quiet and let the Lord do the speaking. Yes, it's because God knows even before it takes place. And we are a people who are prone to react before we even get an action. We are prone to speak before we are asked to speak. Sometimes we are prone to say things that we may feel regretful for after saying. But it's one thing about words. Once they are released from your lip, uh, from your heart to your lip, through your mouth, you can't run and catch them and take them back. Once words has been released, they are gone out. Once it has been said, it has been said. That's why I love the scripture that said God said it, and that sells it. Yes, yes. You don't have to argue about it. You don't have to debate about it. You don't have to go through any unnecessary changes about it. Just stand on God's words. And I heard a young preacher say, just trust him. Amen. Just trust him. And here is the Apostle Paul trusting God for what God can do and what God will do. Because at some point in time in life, we just have to stay still and know that God is in control. Amen. I know a whole lot is going on in the world today. So much going on until we don't, don't know what ends and, and what to be and how it's going to be, but I want you to know that if you know God, that's all you really need to know. Amen. Thank you for the hand clap. If, if you know God, if you really know him, but you got to know him. You know, I, I didn't say I think about knowing him. I didn't say write a book about him. Amen. Because I know a man didn't write no books. Amen. Amen. His name was Jesus. Amen. Amen. He didn't only know God, he was God. He is God and will be God. So I want you to know, and if you are in Jesus, you ought to have the same DNA. If you're in Jesus, but you got to be in him. Amen. You, you, you got to be in him. And here 
we see Apostle Paul, he didn't try to augur his point. He just tried to point out his point. You see, and sometimes that's what we need to do is just show up and let it be done through Christ Jesus. See, Jesus told his disciples to speak according to the Holy Spirit. And you know what? When you let the Holy Spirit control your mind, it will also control what come out of your mouth. Hey, yes, it will. Yes, it will. I've never seen the Holy Spirit fail in anything. No, 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 no. The Apostle Paul here used times of accusations. He used times of being accused and being persecuted to witness to people. Don't you know when somebody talk about you, yeah, that ought to be a time for you to say, do you know Jesus? When somebody's acting up and you know they are just acting up, can you just say, do you know Jesus? You know, Jesus' name is power. I heard my Bible say, at the name of Jesus, the devil trembles. You see, you can't stick around people who want to talk about Jesus. You know why? Because first of all, they're going to call you a Jesus freak. Hey, Amen. That's all right. Call me whatever you want to call me. It's still going to be about Jesus. Because when Jesus come back, I want to be the biggest Jesus freak that ever was. Because I don't want it to be, I was going to, Lord. I was going to go get me a suit Saturday, and I'm going to church on Sunday. Lord, I was really thinking about it. I really had you on my mind. I don't want it to be that. I want it to be I know him. Paul said, I know him. I want to know him not just by his name, but I want to know him in his sufferings. Yeah, yeah, some Christians think they don't have to suffer because they are Christians. If you are a Christian, you just stepped on board of suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things going to come upon you you never dreamed that would come. There are things going to approach you you never thought would approach you. There are people going to say things to you you never dreamed that they would say. But you've got to know how to hold on to your spiritual integrity. You've got to know how to stand upright and be justified just because you just stood there like Jesus did and never said a mumbling word. Don't you know sometimes silence will quieten the devil. Sometimes just being calm will send the devil on the run. But you got to know who Jesus is. Because if you don't know him, you think you can put him on the run. Yeah, yeah, and if you don't watch yourself, they'll have you on the run. Yeah, there was a group in the Bible thought they could buy the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. I don't care how much money you put on that table. No Holy Ghost is going to follow you out of this house. Amen. You might as well pick your money up, put it in your pocket, and go on out the house without the Holy Ghost because you can't put a price tag on it. You either going to have to accept it or you're going to have to reject it. Jesus' disciples saw some demons being cast out in his name. And his disciples uh, went to Jesus and said, Lord, we saw them over there preaching and casting out demons in your name. Jesus said, that's all right. Long as it is in my name, they are for me and not against me. Amen. Jesus know who is against him right now. Jesus know who is for him. Right now, Jesus know who is preaching for him. Jesus know who is teaching for him. Jesus know who is doing what they're doing for him and not for themselves. So don't try to fool Jesus because you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool Jesus none of the time. Can I get somebody to know that Jesus is always on time, Paul used these persecutions against his enemies to witness to them, to make, they even made a platform for Paul to step out and say what he needed to say. Don't you know God will put you in a position where you don't have to fight your own battle. All you have to do is just speak in his name and he said, I'll fight your battle. Can I get somebody? See, the Sanhedrin council thought they was in charge. 
is somebody call them the Jewish Sanhedrin Council. They want you to know that they were, not, they were nothing before God but a people who could give orders. Yeah, you can give orders, but can you take orders? Amen. Sometimes, sometimes we can give, but we can't take. Sometimes we can shoot it out, but we can't shoot it, take it in. Don't you know if you are a child of God, you're going to have to stand if you have to stand all by yourself. Don't worry about somebody standing with you because the ones who are standing with you sometimes are the ones who will go against you. Be real careful about receiving pats on the back all of the time because every time somebody pats you on the back, they don't all the time mean it. Just give God the praise. Don't get me wrong. I, I thank you and I say amen when you say good sermon, Pastor. I want you to know I'm thankful for that. Amen. I don't want you to leave here thinking that I'm not thankful because I preach the word of God. The word of God was preached only through the Holy Spirit. I'm just a vehicle, amen, for the Holy Spirit to use. And I want the Holy Spirit to use my word to get people's understanding straight with God. Can I get somebody? But we need to know that if we are more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, leadership is already in line. We got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But at one point in time, we find in Acts the ninth chapter, Apostle Paul was, ooh, he was a law, he was a law finding counselor who believed in the laws of God, that is the testament of God in the Old Testament, he believed in all of the laws that God had given the Israelites, and that's what he was standing on. Paul was standing on God and God alone. Paul didn't have no Jesus in his heart. Paul was a persecutor of those who served Jesus. Don't you know that when you persecute a Christian, you persecuting Jesus? He told Paul on the Damascus Road, Paul, why do you persecute me? You know that was confusing to this man who was on his way to take Christians to jail, lock them up, beat them, drag them out the church. They called the church the synagogue then. Drag them out the church and beat them, chain them down. Paul was a vicious man. If you know why Paul was so powerful in the, old, in the New Testament, he was a very vicious man against Christians. But God had to break him down. God had to knock him down. He was riding his high horse. Yes, he was. He was going to persecute God's church. But at the same time, God called out his name. Saul. That's what his name, Saul. Before he came, Paul, he said, Saul, why you want to persecute me? He said, Lord, you know when God speaks, you got to know it's the Lord. Yeah, you can call somebody else, but you got to know it's the Lord when he speaks to you. Amen. He said, Lord, who are you? And what do you want me to do? You know, sometimes we can't hear God until we get knocked down. Sometimes we don't know God until we get knocked out. Sometimes we don't want to accept God until we lose something that's precious in our life. But we must understand that God is going to be God. Whether we walk straight out of the womb to Christianity or whether we have to learn the hard way. You know, most people have to learn the hard way who Jesus is. Oh, somebody said, how do you know, preacher? Because I was one of them. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way. I had to get knocked down. Amen. I had to get put down. I had to go in the hospital. I had to come out the hospital. I had to go through wrecks. Coming out saying, how did you make it? I'm glad my God knocked me down off that high heart. I'm glad he put me in a position where I couldn't do nothing but look up. And don't you know when he puts you in a position when you can't do nothing but look up? You ought to be, ooh, you ought to be acknowledged that there's somebody, there's somebody 
up there that loves me. There's somebody that's up there looking at me. Don't you know God? Don't you know God doesn't care about what you have done? Don't you know God doesn't care about who you were? Don't you know God? God is not worried about what you did in the past. God wants you to know him right now. If he knocked you down, I know you're sitting on a pretty seat. But if he knocked you out that seat, know that God is the only one can pick me up. And he can wash me over and over. He can wash me through and through. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad. Jesus began to wash the disciples' feet. He got to Apostle Peter, and he washed his feet, and Peter jumped up and said, No, Lord, you can't wash. Oh, no, my master not washing my feet. Well, Peter, if I can't wash your feet, you can't take part of me in my kingdom. He said, Well, in that case, Lord, just don't wash my feet, but wash my head. Wash my hands and wash my feet. Wash me all over. Wash me through and through. Woo, I'm glad he washed me one day. Are you glad? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been cleansed from your sin? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Do you want him to be on your side? I'm glad. When I'm accused, I just said, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. I said, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him how you want it. I said, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him when you want it. My God, my God is a good God. My God. It's all right. Isn't he all right? All right, all right. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's all right. He's all right. Woo! I'm, I'm through. See you next week. We are so thankful. We are so thankful that we know how to stand before any council. We know how to stand. Paul was called to stand before councils and governors, not on his own, but he was called to stand through the Holy Spirit. Can I get somebody? God, God knows all because God have all. And he'll put you on a stand, and when he put you on that stand, speak through him. And somebody, 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 somebody had victory. Somebody got up and thanked everybody but God. But when God give you victory, be, <laughs> let God be the first somebody. Say, I thank God. He gave me this gift. So just like he gave it, he can take it away. Will there be one today? Candidate for baptism or Christian experience. The Lord would have you to come while the blood is warm.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for every preach word, everywhere to every soul, saved and unsaved. We thank you for giving us your word to stand on in spite of accusations, because we know that you have our back. In Jesus' name, give God one more praise. In Jesus' name. As we prepare now for our prayer, we pray that our prayer list will be Touched by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And every name, company, person, place, or thing that has been placed thereon, because God is a prayer hearing God. Amen. 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 And we just want you by social media to raise your hand if you want a special prayer, or anointing, or whatever you want God to do for you. And if you will, please just stand and bow your heads.
at this particular time for our altar call prayer. Blessed and loving Savior, we thank you for just being God all by yourself. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for turning us around before it was too late. And Father, help us not to be critical of those who are still wandering in the wilderness, those who are contrarily walking and crading on your word, refusing to accept you as your Savior, as their Savior. Lord, we thank you right now just for giving us a mind to pray for those who are lost and don't want to be found. And we pray for those who are struggling in their sin, who are trying to do the best that they can. But Lord God, the forces of evil is always there to give them something better than they think that they have. But we know that you can bring them out, Lord. And we pray for them right now, wherever they are right now, Father. Those who are walking down the aisle at the call of worship and discipleship. Those who are saying, I'm going for the last time. I'm going. I'm going because I know my God is calling me. Lord, we thank you right now for every soul that's waking up to a new spirit. Lord, because you are that lively hope that we all need this morning. So many, Lord, is talking about death. So many is talking about diseases, Lord, but we want to praise you. Because we know that you can overcome anything. And we give you the praise right now for giving us doctors and nurses, for giving us all kind of clinics. Lord, we thank you for every medication. We thank you for everything that you are supplying right now. Because we know that you are able, Lord. And we give you the praise right now, Father. And just let somebody give you praise. Regardless of what the doctors may say or do, Lord, not taking any respect or anything from them, Lord, but let them know that you are the only one can make an absolute decision on what's to be and what's not to be. And we thank you right now for those who will be baptized today. Lord, we thank you for letting us go to the water because we know that nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ will save us from our sins. He is the water and he is the blood that washes us clean through and through. And we give you praise right now. We give you love right now. Because we are on our way. In spite of what somebody may say, Lord, we are on our way to heaven's land. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Give me a strong amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much at this time. You may be seated. At this time now, we are going to have our announcements. Amen. Sister Tracy's 